Today I'm going to show you how to design your own brushes. Hello my friends and let's get started. So in the last video I showed you the basic settings of brushes. This time we're going to use that knowledge to create our own fancy art brushes. The first two of them you can see here and the first one we want to start with is the chain brush, chain link brush. So I downloaded two files, I will link them in the video description. The first one is just a chain, as you can see, it's a drawn chain. And we are going to use our crop tool to just cut out the first two links. And we need the starting bit, this is why I used the drawn one, because the starting bit and the end bit are going to overlap in our finished brush. Now we are going to erase these parts that we don't need. So you can see that this is a locked layer. So click on this little symbol here. So now the layer is unlocked. And now we're going just to use our eraser tool to remove everything that we don't need. So I do this roughly here. And then we are going to zoom in a little bit to have better detail, go back to our eraser tool. Whoops, no, to our eraser tool, there we go. And erase everything that we don't want to have in our final brush. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Just like this and erase this too. There we go, very nice. A little bit more maybe. There we go. Okay, so now that we have done this, let's zoom out a little bit and use the crop tool again. So we go really close to the end. So this should almost hit the end of the pictures you can see here. And now we want to make the, the canvas square. So go up here where it says document and then to resize canvas. Don't click on resize document because this would resize the canvas and the content so it would stretch it. With canvas, it only resizes the canvas. And here you can see you have two numbers. Click on the little lock in the middle because we just want to change one of the number. And then take the bigger number and write it in the field where the smaller number is. So 460 in this case. And then click on resize and you can see we have a square canvas. Now click Control A on your keyboard. So you select all of the canvas and then use your arrange tool up here to align vertically. So now it's in the middle. And this is basically the, how can I say, the stamp that we are going to use for our brush. So I'm going to deselect Control D. And now I'm going to export this as a PNG. This is pretty important because a PNG can have a transparent background, a JPEG cannot have a transparent background. So export it as a PNG. There we go. I will call this chain brush one. There we go. Okay, so now I can close this. We don't need this anymore. Close it. I will make a new canvas. There we go. And up here where it says brushes, you have this little three lines here and there you have a lot of things you can do. You can do a new category, new, rename a category and create different brushes. So. I will go and create a new category to show you how to do that. So new category will called it will be called brushes. So you have to go in here again and say rename category and there you can enter the name. So let's call this tutorial brushes. There we go. And now you can see you have your own category tutorial brushes. Now you have to click up here again and there are th four different kind of brushes. Intensity brushes, round brushes, square brushes, image brushes. Round and square, self-explanatory. Image brush means that you have a picture with all the color values in it that will be used as a picture basically, as an image. And you can't change the color. So only use that if you want to use a picture. We will use that with the rope brush. Now, right now we want to have an intensity brush which uses the shape of the element but you can change the color. So this is important for us. New intensity brush will open the window and let you select the form of your brush. In this case it's the chain. And there we already have our chain brush but we are not done yet. I click down here to make a new layer so I can draw with it and select the paint tool 
And right now, if I would paint, it just would look like this, which is kind of strange and we don't really want to have that. So let's delete that again and go into our brush settings. You can reach them in two ways. Either you click up here on more or you double click the brush. Let's double click the brush. And you can see here, it looks like this. We have all the settings I talked about in the last video. I will also link that in the video description. The first thing we're going to do is to change the spacing. You can see how useful this is in this case. And this is a good distance, but they are still not reacting in the right way. So the next thing we're going to do is go into dynamics and go to rotation chitter and pull this up to 100%. Still looking strange. Click over here and click on direction. Direction is the mouse direction. Now you can see that it's pretty nicely lining up. We can reduce um, the spacing a little bit so the chain is looking good. One problem we have here you can see is that the lines are coming through and there is not really much you can do about that. The problem is that there is a setting missing as far as I know in Affinity Photo because you can't tell the program to either put the next stroke on top or below of your brush and it's always set on top so no matter what we do there will always be these kinds of lines so this is a bit crappy um, but still if you don't look too close you still have a very nice chain brush and we can use it right now but there is another problem. If I would draw like this, you can see it's kind of strange and sometimes parts are sticking out. So we don't want to have that. And this is why in the last video we learned how to use stabilize. So activate stabilize. You can even go to this one here to the second mode because we don't want to have any sharp edges. And now it's automatically drawing this line and connecting them mostly in the right way. So this is pretty nice and you can see we can actually draw a chain that looks like a connected chain. So this is a pretty pretty nice way to do that. Let's delete that again. I will just make a wave. There we go. Very nice. And of course you can change the settings any way you want. So this is how to create a chain brush. It's very easy and of course you can use any kind of chain element or design that you find so go wild and try this out now we're going to do the second brush which is a bit more complex so let's create our second brush which will be our rope brush there we go let's open the picture and you can see this has a black background i will also link the picture in the video description of course so we will click quickly select the backgrounds with our flat selection tool as it's called in affinity photo so we have two selections here and we're going to grow them a little bit so the black is also reduced on the rope um, let's grow it by maybe two pixels apply okay and just delete that and now we have a transparent background so that's pretty nice the next thing we're going to do is to use our crop tool and we can actually set it to one by one so it's square already and we will just select a part of it where we have um how can i say you can see here is the beginning or the like a valley of this rope and we want to mix it with another valley of the rope so we always have the same kind of part or distance and then try to center it as good as possible this looks pretty good Okay, I will hit enter to apply that and we can still um, align it. So let's control A to select all the canvas, use our vertical align tool. There we go, it's a little bit lower. Okay, so this is our starting point, but it's a little bit more complicated because of the overlaps problem in uh, the brushes. And in Affinity Photo, for some reason, you can't really, you can set the blend mode, but for some reason, it's always blending, even if you set it to normal. So you will always have a brightness difference. But we are going to create an image brush, and in an image brush, it's not a problem. So this is good for us. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a group of just that picture. It's a little workaround, a little trick that I'm using. And with this, I'm also going to create a mask and put the mask on top of the other layer because now I can still 
move around the lower layer and have the mask in place. So that's very nice. And now we are going to use a paintbrush tool with, uh, wait, we have to set that to a basic brush that is round. Set the hardness to zero, make it a good large size. Let's see, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to paint um, a mask onto that. That is kind of round on the edges and going into transparency. So we can have an overlap in our um, rope and it's blending smoothly with other parts of the rope. So basically it should be look, looking somewhat like this. Very nice. Okay. Now the first or the next thing we are going to do is to, if you have the rulers visible up here, if you don't have it visible, click on view and there it says show rulers. So this has to be ticked and we just click and drag out two of those guidelines. And when it's getting red, this means it's in the center. And then we take the other one, drag it out to the middle when it's getting green. This means it's in the center. And we're gonna use this kind of like a, how can I say, um, a centering tool basically. Now we can use our background, move it around. Oh, it's still locked. So we have to unlock it and then move it around. You can hold your control key to so move it around in just the vertical um, direction and not move it into any other direction. And now we can just center it on the part where this is crossing, where this line is crossing. And I will just export several of these parts again as PNG. So I will call this R01. And then I'm going to move this around a little bit to another part. Maybe this part here, there we go. Export it again and I will call this R02. So we have different kind of selections. Oh, oh no, okay, I made a mistake. I copied this, okay, that's not good. Sorry, sorry, we have to go back. This is some mis mistakes that happen. Let's just delete these and um, I will export them again. I think I clicked the wrong button. Nope, this is the wrong one too. Okay, let's just move that around and export that again. Export PNG. I will delete these two real quick so we don't have any confusion. R1, this is already the right name. Move this around a little bit. There we go. Export it again. So these are some mistakes that sometimes happen, but it's also good to see them. So to know what to do when things go wrong. And in this case, it's just a good idea to delete the stuff you have already created instead of trying to fix it. There is some kind of breaking of the rope, which is maybe a nice element. We have to try that out. So let's export that to call it. Oh no, this was the size field. Okay export it again so there we go export r03 there we go so now we have three parts that is already enough i would say let's click on new to have our test canvas and then i will go to the brushes that we created before tutorial brushes here and this time i click on new image brush that's important i will select the first image there we go and there you can see our brush and now we're going to the texture field and we're going to click on add and select the second one, add and select the third one. There we go. So we have, this is altering between the three textures while we are using the brush. So again, go to dynamics, set the rotation chitter to 100% and then to direction. So this is lining up already very nicely. And then we are going to use the spacing and you can see how good it is that we have a preview and you can put it at a location where you think okay this looks nice and this is lining up you see these kind of di di diagonal lines inside of the rope so this looks pretty okay and now we should be able to paint a rope there we go let's activate the stabilizer again and make a layer that we can draw on and Ta-da! We have our rope and it looks pretty nice. 
very very cool rope really connecting and blending nicely so you can see it is really easy to create your own artistic brushes of course you can use any kind of texture go really wild i'm really looking forward to see what you created if you want to see more of these and how to do even stranger things with brushes please write in the comments or link the brushes that you have created to see how inspiring the things are that you make on your computer thank you very much for watching if you like my videos maybe subscribe to my channel and if you want to support me even more head over to patreon where you can get my files with all the layers you can post your pictures for feedback and you can even chat with me about problems you have or topics you want to see as a video thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video bye